The small oil rig is a multi-leveled offshore monument that is guarded by AI scientists. At the top, there's a locked crate that can contain AKs, rocket launchers, C4, and other high-tier loot. However, once it's activated, it'll call in heavy juggernaut scientists which players will have to fight in order to get to the valuables inside. All of this may seem intimidating to a player who's never done it before. In this video, we'll go through everything you need to know in order to successfully do small oil rig even as a solo or duo. We'll go through the preparations, the fighting, the attacking and defending of small oil rig as well as some extra tips at the end of the video. Even if you've taken small oil rig a hundred times, be sure to still watch the video since you may learn something new. Like my other Rust guides, this video is separated into five different parts and you can find the timestamps for each section in the description down below or on the screen now. Finally, if you enjoy or learn something new from this video, please consider leaving a like because it really helps me out. Anyway, now that all of that is out of the way, let's get on to the video. The first step to doing small oil rig is getting ready for it. A SAR or a Python are my go-to weapons when it comes to taking small oil. The guns are semi-automatic and therefore their durability doesn't get used up as fast as fully automatic guns such as the MP5, Tommy, or Custom. If it's early wipe, you can also use a compound bow if you don't have tier 2 weapons. Don't forget to bring ammo and meds. I also usually bring a hazmat suit, not only because it provides decent protection from bullets, but it's also waterproof, so if you accidentally fall into the water, you aren't going to get wet and freeze to death, especially at night. Finally, you should bring a melee weapon of some sorts. This is in case you run out of meds, you can harvest 5 cloth from each of the scientists bodies and turn the cloth into bandages. Secondly, you're going to want to bring a blue and red card, as you'll need both of them to get to the locked crate. Additionally, you'll need a fuse to open up another room which contains military crates. Third, you're going to want to figure out how to get to small oil. There are two main ways, flying and boating. You can also swim to small oil, but I wouldn't recommend that. If you're going to fly there, you'll need to cough up 750 scrap for a minicopter or 1250 for a scrap heli. If you choose to boat there, you'll need 125 scrap for a fishing boat and 300 for a rib. No matter what method you choose, be sure to bring extra fuel. The last thing you want is to get stranded in the middle of the ocean. Once you get to the oil rig, you'll need to take out the up to 16 scientists defending it. Depending on your mode of transport, there are two different ways to eliminate the scientists. If you're on a minicopter, land on the helipad and take out the one or two scientists up on it. You have to act fast, however, since some of the scientists from the top floor may have aggroed on you. Use your minicopter or the boxes next to the stairs as cover. Also, as you should have already been doing, go for headshots on the scientists. You can take down a normal scientist with 3 SAR headshots and 2 Python headshots. Now you'll just want to clear out the rest of the oil rig level by level going downwards. When going down the stairs, be cautious since scientists can shoot you in the back through the stairs. It's a good idea to leave the one scientist on the dock alive in case someone decides to counter you by boat. You'll have an audible alarm when the scientist or counter shoots. If you've come to take small oil by boat, take out the scientist on the dock from afar, then boat up to the dock and slowly and carefully go upwards. On the first floor, there should be one or two scientists. For levels 2, 3, and 4, there should be about 4 scientists on each. When going up the stairs, be careful of scientists chilling behind you. They sometimes like to do that. Both regular and heavy scientists can drop guns, meds, ammo, and other various loot. If you'd like to see their full loot tables, I've attached the link in the description where you can see exactly what they drop. Once you've cleared out the regular scientists, go to the admin room under the helipad and use the blue keycard on it. In this room, you'll find a military crate, an elite crate, as well as a green keycard on the desk. You can take the green keycard to the floor below where you'll find a green keycard room. It contains four brown boxes. You can also go to the fuse room which is to the left of the admin room. Go around back and pop the fuse in. You'll find two military crates in there. To activate the locked crate and call in the heavy scientists, go back to the admin room and swipe the red keycard. Then interact with the crate. Once you've activated the locked crate, a Chinook helicopter carrying six heavy scientists will land on the helipad. 
They'll then disperse throughout the top floor of the oil rig. These heavy scientists have more health than regular scientists and carry M249s and SPAS-12 shotguns. When it comes to taking out the heavies, there's one main location where it's easy to kill them. That place is the stairs opposite of the locked crate next to a crane. Here, you'll want to go down both flights of stairs and wait for the heavies to come down. You can go up and try to aggro them, but be careful not to aggro more than one since they can easily overpower you. On the stairs, it's really easy to get headshots on them since they're walking straight at you. Also, there's plenty of cover down here and you can run if you need to. Just keep in mind that if they get too close, they will push you. Since the small oil rig is a monument that can spawn some of the best loot in the game, it's a monument that's usually contested. With that in mind, here are a few tips that can help you attack or defend. When attacking, avoiding the staircases is crucial since there are fatal choke points where defenders can hold knowing that you'll come up from only one spot. Knowing ways to climb up the oil rig is insanely important when countering. You can get onto the first floor by either jumping onto this pipe and then onto the first floor, or by climbing up this ladder. This can be especially useful if you're countering and you think someone may be watching the stairs. If you have a teammate with you, you can boost onto this tank to surprise any defenders holding at the top of the stairs as well as in this area. You can jump up to the very top level of the oil rig by parkouring on these pipes under the helipad. This way is quite risky though since there's no cover. You can also get up to the top floor from the third floor. All you have to do is go underneath the gas flare and then jump up the pipes. You can look down at the dock if you jump onto this box. This can be really useful if you hear someone coming to counter you by boat. If you're stuck on the top floor and want to surprise someone on the level below you, you can jump onto these boxes and then onto this white tank. Then crouch in between these yellow pipes and slide into the third floor. People will rarely expect this rotation. You can get on top of the chimneys by crouch jumping onto this platform. You can use this spot to surprise any counters coming by heli. Once the locked crate is activated, the Chinook will show up on the map. Therefore, people will know when oil is being taken and they may try to counter. If you're cold while on the oil rig, you can come up to the gas flare to warm up. The oil rig will only reset if all the heavies are dead, there's no players in the vicinity, and if the locked crate is completely looted. Alright, that's all I have for you in this video. I hope you learned something new. If you happen to enjoy the video, feel free to drop a like, and if you want to see more content from me, consider subscribing. Also, if you'd like to share any feedback or criticism, please do so in the comment section. I'd really love to see what you have to say. Additionally, I also stream on Twitch, so if you'd like to catch me playing something live, the link is in the description. Finally, I have a Discord server where I post announcements, memes, and other stuff. And if you'd like to join, the link is also in the description. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful day, and don't get too fucking oily.